for the last three years, between recording segments of the D6 generation, Russ, Craig, and Rafe have had various conversations that have spanned the interests of gamerdom worldwide. This is one of those conversations. D6G, the last chapter. Howdy and welcome back to Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> we should get money for this. We should. Seriously. We, seriously. Yeah, really. Anyway, come on now. Ooh. So, um, yeah, you know, this, and this is not random product placement. They don't pay us anything. We just like to sit here and talk and record it. In so, Dunkin' Donuts. Lost Although Chapter. it's really annoying when Russ gets his special orders because that's just ridiculous. Lost Chapter number nine. You know what my Lost favorite? Chapter number nine. nine. Do, do, <laughs> Lost Chapter number nine. <laughs> do, do. <laughs> All right, see, musical my interlude by Craig Russ gets is the Diet Coke with olives. When he's yes, that's my drink. That's my drink. I, what's great about that is if you go to a that's bar. That's fool people from a distance into thinking that you're drinking a big person drink. Is and you I'm order doing. a Diet Coke with olives. First of all, they give you a weird look, but the next time you come in, and you're, or they say you're regular, because they know immediately. Don't forget the idiot that orders Diet Coke with olives. I mean, come that's on. That's right. That's true. That's so true. it's a great drink. I want to be reminded as an idiot, remembered as an idiot. That's right. totally the way to go. All right, guys, that- guys, guys, watch this. You're going to love this. Seriously. Yeah. So, Russ... You could call that drink a Sutan or something, or Santan or Suntan. What's that drink that uh, that Kovath orders in the bars? Quoth? He orders a, I think it's a, it's because the M, I think, actually, but anyway. Oh. Quoth is his name, I think, actually. All right, Both. so um, so Remind today in Lost, people, we did a couple of Lost chapters ago, I believe it was seven. We discussed our favorite uh, recommended reading in the science fiction realm. And then we snuck in humor as well, right? So this time, a lot of people were asking us, and we did say we would do it eventually. We figured we'd attack our favorite fantasy books. But before we get into fantasy, I thought it would be fun to pick a couple subcategories, if you will. We'll go to one you of know Russ. You know, you know Russ and his subcategories. So, so let's start with, let's start just, you know, to warm the room up a little bit with um, mm-hmm. a little with category. Strange, let's start with strange <laughs> things that don't fit anywhere. Right, right. Let's this, not leave them till the end. Exactly, because I think this is required reading, and it's called... This is what I'm calling the horror slash mismash mishmash mm-hmm. genre. Things that wouldn't be confused with hodgepodge. Well, to or give you potpourri. to give you an idea, these are books I think that are really inspiring for games like Malifaux or maybe something Arkham Horror themed because they're just really bizarre and you don't really have a. I mean, what category is Malifaux really? You can't pin it down. Well, there's there's really like already pre made stuff. If you're going for Arkham Horror, though, is well, I suppose, but I don't. Yeah, I don't, kind of and, and I don't think not, any of it made our lists, which is interesting. Yeah, no, that's, that's what I'm saying. Is there any if good? If you or... want to get in the mood for Arkham Horror or Call of Cthulhu, but you don't Redeem want to read Coots. any HP, <laughs> right? That's what I'm saying. Because okay. those are weird. So <laughs> for, like, these those are books are weird, and I are... can't make, take more than one of them at a time. <laughs> these are books that that I enjoy, or others of us enjoy, that are sort of in that ilk. I like that ilk. Ilk word. is good. So my personal favorite that I think uh, is funny because when I first saw Malifaux, I immediately thought of this series, which is The Dark Tower by Stephen King. Yes, uh, and this is a lot of proponents. This is a very this is one of those series that you either really enjoy or bitterly can't figure out and or hate. I <laughs> bitterly can't figure it out. <laughs> yeah, me too. Uh, it's very bizarre. There are parts of it that are so strange and out there that are really, really weird. But it weaves together a really interesting t- tale. It's basically about Roland the Gunslinger, who is essentially an order of ancient cowboy knights, for back, lack of a better term, who um, who now he's essentially the last one, the last gunslinger. And he travels through all these really bizarre alternate reality lands, picking up different companions as he goes on his quest to get to the Dark Tower, which is essentially the center of the universe and is going to destroy everything and cause all kinds of trouble if he doesn't get there and do something important. Um, and that's really the story. There's all kinds of weird, crazy stuff. There's some really interesting writing or the crazy stuff in there. If you really like strange stories, it's a good book. Um, and it's probably my favorite Stephen King book, although he's got, he's got a lot of good ones, obviously, but, um, that's my particular in this category, the dark tower. And, and it's a good time to read it because, um, uh, the, the movie's coming out or is it a movie or a comic book or it's, something? It's a movie TV show, yes. comic book. Tie-in. It's an extravaganza. So uh, it is. It's and there's, a multimedia extravaganza. There's really no way. I, I'm nervous about this project because I don't. This is a book that's really going to be hard to capture. I think in that format. So I think it's going to look corny. Uh, mm. Possibly, yes. But um, but if you like weird stuff, very Malifaux. If you like Malifaux with like trains and and cowboys and then undead 
crazy zombie people. I mean, all that's actually in there. So uh, check it out. I have a question for you guys and Stephen King in general. Yeah. Does anyone, uh, Russ, you don't because I know you read his books. Craig, do you have the problem or anybody listening out there when you read Stephen King, he's so good of a writer that it like melts your mind and you just get can't read it? That's why I, um, I can't. Like no, scared? My brain is pretty, my brain is pretty melt proof. Do you yeah. mean like melt your mind like scared melt? Yeah, and or? I love, you know me, I love scary games. I yeah. love, scary, I cannot read Stephen King. I read it and that book is so scary that like I just. Really? I, yeah. See, it falls apart for me in the end when they're killing the alien with love and they're all like 12 year olds. I don't remember that. All I remember yeah, is that. I don't know how you can clown. forget that's very, yeah, that's, that. that was, I think you may yeah. be remembering the TV show more than the book. Yeah, the stand. No. The stand is also really good, by the way. I, the, I, the stand is phenomenal. I, yeah. I just couldn't take Stephen King anymore after a while because the man just does not have any respect for his own characters. He just kills them brutally, left yeah. and right. Unlike Martin, who doesn't do that. At <laughs> I was going to say, I'm not unlike George R. R. Martin. <laughs> right. Um, yeah. That, that what's means, this next one? That's. I think that's a Craig one. That's me. Oh, yeah, what do you think, And Craig? I was trying to segue. I had a beautiful segue all put together. Yeah, we that. stepped thank, on that. Thank you, Rafe. We stepped on You're that. You're welcome. Uh, so <laughs> anyway, uh, so where Stephen King really is brutal to his characters, um, you have on the uh, uh, in, in the same neighborhood, but more kind to his characters, you have Dean Koontz, mm-hmm. who re- writes basically the same. Well, he writes a whole bunch of different stuff, actually. But he writes a lot of his books are very similar to uh, Stephen King. And for me, the best one I enjoy, which is definitely Mishmash. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, there's two, um, but the one that p- p- pokes into my head the, the most is Lightning, it's called. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's an awesome book about time travel. And it's got a huge, awesome twist that would literally, speaking of melting minds, it would <laughs> melt M. Night Shyamalan, Mahamalama, Ding Dong's <laughs> mind. Nice. He would read it and go, oh, my God, this is a twist. So I do. Well, that like, sounds good. Then is I, it spooky? It is very. Some of his stuff is extremely spooky. Yeah, but I I found him after I complained to several of my friends that like, wow, you know, I just can't handle going through an entire book with Stephen King over and over and over again, and at the end, his main characters are just crushed and mm, left yeah. to die, and um, and so and I don't get me wrong, I have nothing but the absolute utmost respect for Stephen King as a writer and as a creative mind and all that. Oh, I hear what you're saying. But um, but I just it, it, I feel brutalized when I read like I, back in high school I would read several books by the same guy in a row and yeah. you know three or four Stephen Kings and you're like okay I get it I get it there's no hope no with King mind. I think with King any any of his books you read you can't read a lot of King in a row just because it's no no but, it's, it's kind of like H.P. Uh, Lovecraft that way but I well, do like I, he's one of my favorite writers just because and this is probably why I like the Dark Tower so much I don't even really care what he writes about. Yeah. And his writing style is so, I don't know what it is, I connect with it at such a level with his dialogue and how he That's writes. That's why I can't read it. And how he puts a story together. I'll read books by him like, like um, that are just like Hearts in Atlantis, whatever it was, that is really, if you told me what that book, if I told you the plot of that book, you'd be like, really? I mean, it, it's just not a plot line that is like really engrossing. I mean, it's got some interesting, but it's really, you know, like a daytime drama. And yet, right. I love every minute of it. I can read almost anything he writes. That's how I know how he's he so skillful. Which I know, I know that's we're not talking about. It. We're kind of, you know, goobing on him. But right, right. I can watch his movies, no problem. Love watching his movies. Read the book scares the crap out of me because he's so good at describing the horror. I'm like, oh my god, she yeah. opened the door. The toaster. <laughs> oh, okay, the toaster's <laughs> fine. You know, I mean, that's what happens to me. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So what about um? Now this one surprised but, me, um, Craig. What? Or do you want to finish off on some Koontz section? Uh, no, no, I'm just I'm trying to remember the um, the other Dean Koontz book that I think is awesome. They made a movie out of it, and it was just ridiculous. But um, uh, there was a golden retriever, and it was like an intelligent golden retriever because it was a genetic test, oh. and it was um, – That's with Tom Hanks. Turner and Hooch. Mm, <laughs> thank you. <sighs> <sighs> um, Air Bud. Uh huh. Thanks. Okay, we're moving. We're moving on. We're moving on. Yeah. Um, now, Craig, this is surprising me on the list here. The third author on our little list here is Anne Rice. Yeah. Well, now, see, just because I'm not like a flipping out vampire fan extraordinaire like other people we know. No, no, no. I thought you were or, picking or mar- got married to. No, no. no I doesn't thought you were... mean that I can't like Anne Rice. I, th- I didn't think you were, you liked her for the uh, vampire series. I thought you were more into her for the uh, bodice ripping stuff she did earlier in her career. 
<laughs> oh yes, indeed. Those uh, <laughs> what, what were they? The alternate? Um, didn't she do a bunch of alternate fairy? She's got tale some very books? soft. Well, let's just say um, no, it's, risque it's, it's, books. Call it soft. Yeah. <laughs> right. huh. No kidding. I didn't know that. Yeah. Not that I ever. Is a lot she of the Rice. writer for Lestat and those guys? Yes. The interview with the vampire. My wife is a huge Anne Rice fan. Or was. Um, the vampire series is great, but other books, and she'd get into the witch. There's another series of books by her about witches that she likes. Um, is she the author that wasn't religious and now is? Yes. And so Ro- oh, Nicole really? has found, yeah, Nicole has found that her later books have gotten more and more preachy over time. Uh-huh. But oh. she did, if you do like, uh, and this is not to steal your point here, Craig, but if you do like vampire books, the vampire Lestat and the interview of the vampire are really good. They were really uh, good. I enjoyed reading And I love the yeah. Queen of the Damned is yes. like a, a 10 yes. billion times better than the movie, which has no even passing yeah, relation yeah. to it. Yeah. And in particular, the book that I really enjoy because vampires aren't hugely my thing is I loved her book, The Mummy. Yes, too. The Mummy was good. Um, is that based on the movie that's The Mummy? No. <laughs> no, you stop. Oh. I don't know. Um, no, it's not. Uh, and moving fine. back to Dean Koontz a little bit, so light because uh, I just want to cover another one of his titles. Lightning is the one, the time travel one, which mm-hmm. is awesome with an awesome twist. And Watchers is the mo- is the book that has um, this guy stumbles upon a German retriever out in the desert, and it turns out that it was a it was the the subject of genetic testing. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it's super intelligent, and he doesn't find that out until he's playing um, Scrabble with his kid. And yeah. the, the kid like sp- spills the Scrabble tiles all over the floor, and he notices the dog like pushing the tiles around with his nose. Right. And he's like, "What are you doing?" And the dog's spelling out like, "You are in grave danger. The other <laughs> creature that was created when I was created is hunting me." <laughs> not, I mean, that's you know, that's like spoiler that's like, alert. <laughs> yeah, that's not actually a spoiler because I kind of made uh, that scene oh, up, good, but it gives good, you an idea good. of what's going on. Cool. And that was very creepy because they're getting hunted by this thing, and the dog's trying to save them, and that's <laughs> right. awesome. So that's the horror slash whatever category. Now, which it does not include supernatural, which, nor does it include <laughs> steampunk. Right. Well, so here's yeah, right. So now, unfortunately, in the bookshelves, right, they're having they have all this kind of together. But but I thought we'd have a separate category for supernatural because I kind of look at horror as like a, like Rafe was saying, sort of like freaks you out a little bit, makes it hard to sleep at night. Like what's this going on? Then the supernatural category is a little different. It's more like well, my particular favorite in this category would be like Harry Dresden, right? Where it's not really horror at all. It's just the adventures mm-hmm. of this supernatural hero who um, goes through the world and does his thing. And so Dresden, we've talked about before on the show, so I won't belabor Dresden too much. But um, It's awesome. It's fantastic. And actually, I do want to talk about it a little bit because we get a lot of letters or emails. We don't get letters. We get emails um, from listeners who are like, well, actually, by far, the most, of the most emails we get regarding this is, you were so right. Oh, Dresden <laughs> is awesome. But we do occasionally get emails that are like hey guys on your recommendation i picked up dresden and the first book's okay but you know it's kind of thin and it's not that great and the characters are a little a little two-dimensional and my advice to all of you is you have to keep reading because that's his first book that's his first right. published you book. know and that's at that he he's developing as an author as he's writing this series to which the is point fun to grow with him on actually also, yeah, exactly and also his world is like the first book could be a standalone i mean who the heck knows but it's not and and the art overarching story starts to develop in those right. subsequent books that are just get better and better and better. And, and more. unlike certain other authors who shall remain nameless, uh, Jim Butcher works very hard to keep cranking the books out. That's yep. true. So you don't have yep. to wait too long for another now great book. Now control your nerd rage. I'm not nerd rage. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Uh, he's a he's an author that is prolific and keeps the series going. And the and yeah. the books still to this date. Now, of course, he could he could turn the corner anytime and jump the shark. But to this date, they do not feel contrived or cranked out. Like each one no, really I takes the series yep. to the next level. So it's really. And a speaking great about a ta- like staying on task, this is a guy who decided to r- write an entire epic fantasy series and still really didn't miss a lot of beats with his uh mm-hmm. with dresden, his you know yeah. bread and butter which was dresden right mm-hmm. so i like that about him he, you know yeah. he, he knows he knows what his fans want and he keeps giving it to him which is great absolutely you know we don't have it as a bullet point but as you're talking about dresden it's, it's reminding me of another genre i like which is just the mystery um is a genre but not the you know take away take make dresden take away the supernatural i like that kind of mystery book so like pope defect Detective movies or books? Yeah, yeah, like with the gumshoe and the detective. Yeah, hey, hey. And, yeah. All righty then. Um, another not author that I am very, 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 um, uh, I like a lot <laughs> is Charlene <laughs> Harris, who writes the Suki Stackhouse book. See, now, 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 I just want to point out here that you yeah. earlier were kind of saying I'm not a big vampire level. Now I'm not you've a named, big, no, I like named things. two 
high-end vampire authors. Absolutely. Oh, these are vampire books? Well, not really, because the vampires kind of take the, – they're, they're huge in the HBO TV series. Right. But the HB, but the but they have vampires take a backseat to all the other supernatural stuff in the novels. Yeah, well, there's a lot of stuff on there. After right? the, after the first few novels, um, uh, the the relationship she's developing with the vampires kind of falls apart, and she ends up spending time with werewolves and were tigers and witches. Right. And For those who don't know, this is the the, the HBO series True Blood. True Blood yeah. is based on hey, Craig. Books. Yes, Rafe. I had a relationship with a fee female vampire once no, what no. a pain in the neck uh, <laughs> i knew that was coming yeah yeah <laughs> don't forget you feed your waiters it's gonna be i a crack long, myself up uh, be a long night. well that's good because you're not cracking anybody else up but boom <laughs> anyway uh yeah so charlene harris and and don't if if you're like me and you're kind of like oh the the hbo series is a little risque and, and it's a little, little hardcore-ish um don't like the books don't have all that stuff in it. The books are very, uh, I mean, they have some of it in it. You know, there's a little bodice ripping, but there's not a lot. Um, and to follow along with, if you like Dresden, I've got a couple others. Uh, this one was a bunch of listeners recommended to me. Charles Strauss. Oh, no, heard And him. his series is called The Laundry. Oh. Okay. And it's as if you're, it, it could ha- it could almost happen in Dresden's world. Mm-hmm. Except that um, the laundry is this government organization whose job it is to stop supernatural threats to the existence of the world, basically. Oh, nice. Oh, that's and, cool. uh, and there's some really good stuff. And but there's that one I, I mentioned it. I can't. I think it was called Jennifer's Morgue. I think oh. because all the names make no sense because they're the code words for for missions, yeah. and they come up randomly. So the, the 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 titles make very little sense. But um. Yeah, that one was really odd because there there was like some pornographic stuff in there that really didn't need to be in there and stuff. But I, I was kind of a little – I was confused by that. But the overall story is good. I enjoyed it. Didn't enjoy it enough to re- to buy the hardcover when the next book came out. I'll wait for it in paperback to give you an idea of where it falls <laughs> because I have bought Dresden and Charlene Harris uh, hardcovers when those came out. Hmm, okay. Uh, you and got then, enough of those vampire books. Ex- <laughs> there you go. There are vampires in Dresden too. You're right. I know. I'm just saying. That's what I'm, 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 I'm not evidence. saying I'm against vampires. More I'm just saying I don't choose these things because they have vampires in them. Uh-huh. Yep. Anyway, <laughs> and then um, if you're looking for a long ride, uh, Simon Uh-oh. R. Green has a huge series called the Nightside series, uh. which is a lot like um, oh, what's the guy Stardust? Who N- Neil Gaiman? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I believe oh, yeah. it's Neil yep, Gaiman. Yep. Is it Neil Gaiman who wrote? I think um, it is. There's a book, uh, there's, and I can't remember it. I talked about it on the show before because I, I, I found it and I listened to it, and it's read by him, and it's awesome. Um, and I can't remember. Down, downside? I don't know. No, because Nightside's this. But anyway, it's, the, uh, Lon- it's like London has this dark underbelly where supernatural stuff lives. Well, that's Simon R. Green's Nightside all the way. And it's like this supernatural realm that takes the same general territory where um, – where London exists and you go through these doors and then you're in the night side and there's all kinds of soup, everything from angels all the way to, you know, like demons <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so yeah. there's a lot there and it's really cool. Uh, they're not very long. They're not very big and they're not hard at all to read. They're very quick reads, but there's literally like more than 10 or 12 of them. Wow. Cool. And, uh, and I enjoy them. So if you like burn through the Dresden files and you're looking for something else, uh, Simon R. Green's The Night Side is something to check out anyway. Sweet. And yeah, and that's what I've got first. So now I think we need to move on to the, the headliner category here. Absolutely. Yes. yes. Fantasy. That was the warm up. Now I think we can't really t- talk about fantasy at all without mentioning the giant elephant in the room. No, nope, we can't. Which is, of course, uh, Tolkien. So what do you guys think of Lord of the Rings? I mean, is there any doubt that that should be read by just about everybody on the planet? Or is there? Or do you guys have many mixed feelings about that? I have some um, thoughts. Okay, now remember that Dunkin' Donuts does close at about 11, so... <laughs> yes. Right. I mean, we can do this whole show on, on Lord of yeah, the Rings, but exactly. uh, we'll that's, try to keep That's it. what I'm afraid of, so... Yeah. So, no, so no, Rafe, to keep it short, please summarize, please summarize the Silmarillion in 15 minutes less. Go. <laughs> My thoughts on Tolkien are, yes, it's a seminal work, so if, you, if you're a nerd, you have to read them, and you have to read The Hobbit. However, you will find that as you read them, they're kind of long and can get kind of boring in places. And um, yeah, but that's most know, fantasy. Let's be honest. Um, uh, no, some some fantasies like the Patrick Rothfuss, you know, the the um, 
Cavalth series. Um, I, I can't think of the names of the books. Be- all of a sudden. It's better, but it's got some of that too. Where you just you not just for me. I know you had that. Spend I know an hour you, you did it all, uh, man. Those are page burners making, for me. Making love to it, but yeah. Um, yeah. So in other words, if you were like brand new to fantasy, I wouldn't necessarily say start with Tolkien. Let's put it that yeah. way. So those are my um, thoughts. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I do agree that I think uh, the the twin the the twin that would be wrong. That'd be bad. The two towers. Uh, gets a little slow for me. Um, yes, I, in rereading it, in yeah. rereading it. Um, but I, you know what? The Return of the King has got to be in my top five favorite books of all time. So, yep. and you can't really enjoy that without reading the first two. Yeah, I, I think so. uh, I, I agree. I, there's definitely slow spots to Tolkien. There's no doubt about it. But I think that the uh, all in all, it's a it's a fantastic yeah. series of books that need to read. And if you really, if you're going to read. A slow fantasy book because there's plenty of out there to choose from. I think you could do a lot worse than Tolkien. And first of all, it's it sort of defines a lot of the stuff uh, from the ground up. And and remember yeah. when you when you read this book, I mean, dwarves and armor and elves that shoot bows come from this book. Correct. Prior to these novels, dwarves and dwarves were garden gnomes and elves were these little fairies. And there were no, you know, the idea of what we think of in Dungeons and Dragons all comes from Lord of the Rings. And so. Mm-hmm. I think it's a it's, or Warhammer Fantasy Battle, which all exactly derives from Lord of the Rings. So you, so I think that's where you want to um, where you want to look for that and, and kind of get that and at least at least give them a shot. I mean, if you can't take if you can't make it through this, the first book, fine. The and, Hobbit and, isn't yeah. is a light read though. The Hobbit is actually because it was originally designed as a kids book, so the Hobbit yeah. moves quickly and gives you a good feeling for his writing style. Not really. The Hobbit's actually pretty boring. Well, I thought the Hobbit. I just reread it not too long ago. I, I, I thought, disagree. Yeah, I yeah. think it's an easy read. Yeah. Okay. We'll have to I found it to be more boring. Yeah, yeah, it's not any worse than Narnia. It's about the same speed as Narnia, I think. Right. Which we should also put on here. We but. should. Now, Narnia is um, Narnia is interesting though because well, Tolkien stands up for me. I can go back to read it over and over. I mean, it's, it, you're right. It's slow, but it's still strong writing styles. Narnia, yeah. I liked it as a kid. I loved it as a kid, but as I go back to it now by C.S. Lewis, of course, it, it yeah. feels like child's reading to me. Do you know what I mean? Like the stories uh, well, are very is, simple, actually, and yeah, but, it's it's almost um, like sim- very simple stories. Yeah. Well, I took a college course in it actually, and that was fascinating because there's all kinds of stuff in there that you don't, I don't think you notice when you read it as a child, as yeah. a children's book. Well, it's shocked through full of symbolism it, all over the place and all kinds right, of Christian it, references, yeah. but it, in terms exactly. of like an actually deep, you know, yeah. compelling. I, well, I, I haven't read it. I I I, w- I have not reread it since that college course. So yeah, see, I, I just reread I, them about. I've got to bow you, bow to you. I just reread I about you read a it recently. year. Yeah, because I was getting. Well, the kids wanted to listen to them. You wanted to gear it up for the kids. And so yeah. I was listening. We're doing Audible. We got them on Audible and listened to them in the car, and, yeah. and they loved them. They thought it was great. And it is what is good about it is it's great for younger kids because the stories are very easy to follow. You know, right. whereas. Um, even yeah, they're, they're not very deeper. complex stories. Right, that's what I mean. They're very simple, but they're yeah. fun. They're, they're fun reads. Their light reads are short. You know, they're great. I think they're great for kids when they're trying to learn. Like my daughter Rose now is at the stage where she can rip through a 150 page book like in an hour. So she's ready to move on to something that'll mm-hmm. take her a couple days. Yeah, so they, like, they, this was my first series ever in my yeah, life. That, yeah. that you know, where you finish it and you're saving up your pennies so you can go, one, you know, right. your parents can take yeah. you to the bookstore and you can go buy the next book. And yep. the, those are my memories of the, of Narnia. Definitely. My first series was the three investigators by Alfred Hitchcock. Ooh, good choice. Yeah, there you go. Again, not in this category, but back to mystery, Rafe. Maybe we should have had a mystery category. for Yeah. You. And well, we maybe we'd do this again in the future. Yeah, who knows? Um, but how about ice and fire, which we don't have to talk about a lot because we've been talking about it <laughs> right. recently, but, so Game of Thrones. Um, I think all three of us are fans of George R. R. Martin's Song of Ice we and Fire. We are. Oh, not, every, yeah. not everybody is, because this is the this is another one of those books like Tolkien where you can say, if you start reading the first book, almost invariably we get a lot of email, oh, it's kind of slow. You're like, well, wait till the first hundred pages. Uh, I see. I found Ice and Fire to be page turners. Uh, I think the first hundred pages are rough. It's it's very it's very these are the ancient trees and this is the, you know, and, it, and it's, if you're into that stuff, if you love to see a new world defined and mm-hmm. almost like watch the world grow around you, then it's a great book. If you like action, there isn't really any action in, oh, in, no, the, there's first, no action. in the first book until like, I like a good build through. up though. Yeah. I mean, that's the thing. I, I love them, but I'm just saying people, I've heard people, a lot of people there's, say, there, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, I, I disagree. I think there's a lot more action, but it's all like flashbacks and memories yes, and, and, yes. and half remembered scenes yep. that, so there's no real time combat in the first probably 200 pages. Yeah. Uh, if you don't count things like running down an unarmed little boy and things like that, 
but um but there's all these memory the memories of um of the battle at the of the the um with uh the three king's guard that are guarding the tower that that Eddard Stark's sister is in after, when she's dying. I mean there's all kinds of stuff that is like, you know, half remembered dreams and things that the characters are having as they move forward. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That coincidentally mm-hmm. aren't in the TV show either, so you know, there's all kinds of stuff that you do miss just getting it from that um yeah, I think if you like the For show, you, you may like the books, depending on how much depth you like to your fantasy. But I, I think it is, as a fantasy fan myself and someone who, if you enjoy the depth of a book like Tolkien, I think you will love Ice and Fire because it's the same sort of depth, but much darker, you know, much darker story in terms of yeah. what people do to each other. Yep. Um, so I definitely highly recommend it. It's a much more grown-up story than Tolkien, if, if you will. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I really enjoy it a lot. I think it's a fantastic book. And I think if you like fantasy at all, you should really read the read Yeah, the yeah. That's a seminal Me too. book. Yeah. But right. we, yeah, but it always, it's always good to give a little, you know, a little uh, caveat that there are people who don't like it. Right. Well, these and are we my... Don't, well, you don't know what's wrong with them, but, you know. <laughs> <Right>. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> not everybody not everybody likes Levy Thing. So, Granger, core, Granger now I got to... books. Yeah, okay. Um... And and they're not necessarily, um, you know, maybe seminal, but they were for me. Yeah. And um, it's the Belgariad by David Outing. Now talk about uh, it. Talk wait. Talk about yeah, an anti-hero. Hero. Talk about an anti-hero and a depressing dude. Yeah. I mean, Who? geez. In the Belgariad. Yeah. Oh yeah. Who's the anti-hero? I can't remember. Who's the anti-hero in Belgariad. Isn't he the? the isn't he the dude with leprosy? No, 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 no. no. Book. Oh, that's later on. That's Stephen R. Donaldson's Thomas Covenant, the Unbeliever. Oh, Covenant. That is the very yes. definition of yeah, it. Yeah, that's what I was I got my book messed up. You're right, yeah. Yes. No, this like, is... Holy crap. No, but... <laughs> Yeah, this Belgium. is about Gareth, who's a young boy. It's a very, it's a very stereotypical beginning. Yeah, yeah. Gareth, the young boy, he's an orphan, and I'll just leave it with that in case you haven't read it. But then they, they handle um, magic in a very, really cool way, and so actually the term yeah. bell is is added to the name and they and so magic is done in just a really neat and interesting way and i can't remember the uh, the books i read were the standard 5 there's 5 in the belgaria now mm-hmm. there's there's tons that have gone after that right. well the funny thing i i love them or i loved them i haven't reread them in a i you know, i reread them like 5 years ago so and they still stood up i loved them a lot but they're the storyline is sort of basic, but yep. I love the characters. Yep. I love the plot. Yes. I love the journey that the characters go on. Yes. I love the epic scope that it reaches at the end because it starts very small and intimate. Yep. Uh, interesting thing to me is if you read the foreword, David Eddings talks about how he likes writing these other types of books, but he oh. turned to fantasy as, yes. an ex- as, a, as an experiment. He wanted to see something. Now, if you read The Belgariad, it's awesome. I love it. If you read the Malorian, which is five more books with the same characters in the same universe, going through pretty much the exact same mission. <laughs> right. And then you read the next two that I read, but I, the next two series each had three books, different universe, different characters, exact same plot. I think the experiment was how many times can I get people to buy the same story? Probably. That's what I think the experiment is. Because I haven't read those other ones. If you, if, if, if you, if you like fantasy, you like epic, epic fantasy with the journeys and things like that, I think the Belgariad is awesome. Yep. Don't read the Malorian. Don't buy it until you're done with the Belgariad. Yeah, and if you enjoyed the Belgariad a lot, read the Malorian. I, I wouldn't read anything else because it's all the same. Well, as far as those. But then if you really loved the universe, he's got other point of view books. That include backstory, like he's got pull, a book about Polgara, the sorcerer. That book is and, awesome. Yeah, he's book got about, a book about Belgarath, the Belgarath sorcerer. Belgarath, and then Belgaria. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Um, my, um, my other one, I have a lot of Piers Anthony, and I'm not putting down the Xanth novels. Xanth is kind of fun, crunchy, goofy fantasy. But another one that I really liked is called the Blue Adept series. And that series is one where there's two planes of existence, and in the same planet, Half of the planet is fantasy and the other half is science, science-based. And you actually have a clone. So there's a, there's a wraith in the fantasy world and there's a wraith in the science world. And this yeah. one character learns how to go between the worlds. Um, so that's a really good one. I think there's three or five books on that. I think there's six. There's three and then there's another three, I think. Okay. Another one of my favorites from Piers Anthony are Incarnations of Immortality. Ooh. And, th- and this is where he examines the different uh, sort of archetypal, I don't know what Powers of nature. Thank you. So mm-hmm. the first one starts out um, 
death. So you, you, you get the book as read the, through death's eyes. And it's called On a Pale Horse. On a Pale Horse, yes. Thank you. I ride. Yeah. Death is actually and it's guy, awesome. It's oh a Grim God, Reaper, and he's got a big sickle. And then I, I can only remember one of the other ones, which is Time. What was the – I can't remember some of the other ones, though. Right, but, but, but the important thing is On a Pale Horse, he doesn't ride a pale horse. He actually rides a uh, Mustang convertible. Yep. <laughs> There's all kinds of cool stuff like that. Uh, I'd have to say as far as Piers Anthony goes, Piers Anthony is a lot like Orson Scott Card to me in that he starts strong and then he just gets wacky. I agree. Um, within the series? Blue, I liked, I liked within stuff each and, series. The Blue okay, Adept yeah. series, one, two, and three, awesome. Four, five, and six, weird. I Incarnations agree. I agree. of Immortality, the first four are incredible, and the next ones are just kind of like, eh. Yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, now, have you guys read Battle Circle? Never no. heard of it. Battle Circle is a cool little gem if you can find it. It's about this post-apocalyptic world where your status is generated by fighting in these battle circles. So picture a world like Fallout, Russ, mm -hmm. and you're wandering around, and I meet Craig, and there, there will be this uh, almost this like sumo wrestling type of circle. So there's like a little raised lip, <laughs> and I say to Craig... Uh, basically, like the language is kind of guttural, and I'm like, I will fight you using the batons. And he says, I will fight you using the one-handed sword. And then they fight, and then you know they kind of get to know each other or, or part ways or whatever. All I can remember is is the um, and it, it says follows this one character named Vor V O R, and he goes through this path through the. Through, it's only one book, but there's three sections within the one book. Hmm. But the different people specialize in the different weapons. You can specialize in the sword. You can specialize in two swords. You can specialize in the baton, the morning star, the club. Okay, and what Vor we, we... does, Vor becomes a master of all the weapons. Oh, cool. And you follow his journey. So it's almost like one of those martial arts training, training ones. Oh, it's cool. really cool. Um, I also include Harry Potter in here into the fantasy. And um, I, um, I call him the new Tolkien. I mean, excuse me, her. Um, the new Tolkien, because the reason why I say that is she creates a non tolkien s fantasy world. So magic works a little differently. Not not brand new that's never been seen before, but the elves are not the tolkien s elves. You know, the, the uh, wizards are not Gandalfy wizards. And so she, you know, if you haven't read any Harry Potter and watching the movies, not the same as reading the books. The books are fabulous. I'd agree. Well, the writing style is excellent. Yes. Um, yeah. J.K. Rowling. Rowling. Yeah, she, um, Stephen King once said of her that she, nobody does backstory like her. And I, I'd have to agree. Mm -hmm. I think the way she does mm -hmm. that. But I think the, the, um, what I think she really did more than, than sort of rebrand fantasy is that, and introduce it against a lots of kids. I think the couple things that Harry Potter did that were seminal. First of all, it was the first time in many, many, many decades, or at least years that I can remember that there were toys and things for a book. Like as opposed to a movie. Yeah, before the movie came out, like in the late nineties, you Harry Potter stuff was everywhere. Harry Potter wrapping paper, Harry Potter toys and Toys R Us, Harry Potter everything. And yet it was just a book. It was awesome. Everybody was reading. There were lines at Barnes and Noble by kids to buy a book. That was fantastic. And the other thing about it is I think it sort of defined how um the the it sort of really got people thinking about how to write as a kid again, but for adults and, and go through sort of the coming of age through school process. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think sort of now it's almost, it's very difficult to read another book like that since Potter and not see the well, influence. Well, it's hard for Russ anyway. Well, no, we I mean, know that. well, especially if they copy <laughs> point for point, what happens? Um, so, so thank God in, point in, for point. thank God in uh, name of the wind uh, or in uh, wise man's fear. There's no longer has to deal with, uh, Malafoy, I mean uh, Ambrose, or have to deal with Snape. I mean, uh, what are oh, his Jesus. <laughs> it's getting a little better now. Yeah, God um, forbid the guy has actual foils that he has to deal with. Yeah, rich mm -hmm. rich foils who are um, other students in the school who um, don't like him. You can really just see so. how Russ's engineer brain I feel like works. I'm He's arguing like, with two people, but that's okay. It. So what else you got, Granger? Um, my two other quick ones are I did like the Wheel of Time. Oh, <laughs> I got to vomit. <laughs> and keep gagging. I did like Swords of Shinar. Oh, God. I don't know why you guys don't like. I love Terry. Dude, Burgers. talk uh, about a point for point ripoff. I'd rather rip read a phone book. Sword of Shinar is a point for point ripoff of Tolkien. And I don't even yeah, go there and say, is. you know what? It's actually not a point for point ripoff for us because it's oh, a no, sword, not a ring. Come on, man. It's a hey, total ripoff no of Tolkien. For me. <laughs> it is. Disgusting. But see, that's, 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 that's a good Potter's thing if somebody lo loves Tolkien to the point where they want to relive that uh, and they can't find it anywhere. 
Yeah, but at least I the, liked it. I, I liked oh. the fact that he was a druid, and I just thought it was cool. Oh. On the Maybe Wheel of Time is great if you have about forty years to waste. Well, the problem like with Wheel of Time just gone to prison. Yeah, start the Wheel of Time. Well, the problem with the Wheel of Time is the 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 concepts are cool, but talk about slow story development. Yeah, that pacing's a little slow. Oh, a little. <laughs> it's like and the books are like eight thousand pages each. Yeah, a they slow are. Yeah, story. each book. I like to read. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of a soap opera. You know, soap operas. You could only watch Fridays, and you'd always see because everything sure, interesting. Sure. Is, it's like yeah. that. You could just read the back of each book and catch the whole story. Right. <laughs> like in the yeah, pride. Oh, I would not. I like the journey, uh, but I get the Wheel of Time confused with uh, Ice and Fire anyway. So I could be. I could. Wow. Be we're wow, sorry, George uh, Martin. Very nice. Wow. George R. R. Martin just spun in his bed because he's not <laughs> he dead. Did. Oh my god. Robert Jordan could very well be spinning what? in his grave. Oh, Wheel I'm of not, time I'm not is saying like anything ice and against fire? No, I know you're I'm not. just saying oh. inside my head. Yeah. I know. Okay. I I'm just I can saying, see how just that the would same. be like that, to me that would be like there's a beautiful woman on the street and an ugly woman on the street, and later on I go, I don't know, I keep getting those mixed up. It's like getting Harry Potter and Dresden confused. <laughs> well they're both spellcasters, I guess. Yeah. All right. Much. <laughs> right. Well, point, Dresden point. does have Dobby the house elf. I don't know what you're talking about. Um, oh, by <laughs> the way, I remembered Neil Gaiman's uh, one single book is called Neverwhere. Of the oh, one about okay. The, bot, the not a game uh, ugly fan. underside of uh, of London. It's awesome, dude. You like Terry Brooks? How can you not like anyone? Yeah. I don't know. So anyway, I'm gonna. I'm <laughs> gonna take a few. In the, is in the crapper, dude. I'm just saying. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take a few. First, we'll right. go back to Jim Butcher because that that little hiatus he took to write fantasy was awesome. I loved it because it's very. Um, the, 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 the nation that is the focus of the main story, it's called the Codex Alera. And the nation, the Alera, is basically Roman to the point where over the course of these books, you find out that this legion was somehow transplanted to this planet. And this is a, 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 an empire that they've created thousands of years later. Right. And so it's awesome. The, the characters are, the, the names are very Romanesque. The armor is very Romanesque. Um, and the the weird thing is, eventually, the big bad guy over the course of the series turns out to be this alien menace that's kind of like Tyranids. So yeah. that's that's a little odd. But um, I really yeah, I thought you were it. disappointed in the Codex Alera because yeah, you did mention was, that once. What was the critique? I think it was that it was he didn't take his time in explaining his somethings. What was it, Russ? Uh, he repeated I, himself or something, wasn't it? Yeah, some yeah, kind of yeah, yeah, yeah. Issue? That's it. Uh, oh no! Oh, he the, bowed his head, right? Yeah, something like he kept that. Kept saying things like he bowed his head. Yeah, yeah. Little, I mean, little things like that. I think the story is good. Oh, cool. All right. Um, if you that's if you're a Jim Butcher and a fantasy fan, I would go to that. I, right. I'm not saying that's like the best fantasy in recorded history. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but I enjoyed it, and because I'm a big fan of the Roman Empire, uh, Stephen R. Donaldson is what Russ was talking about <laughs> when he talked about anti-heroes. Anti-hero. Let Holy me set crap. the stage. Let me set the stage for you. <laughs> this guy's okay. life is now, crap. Keep in mind, this is the central character of these. There's now, I believe, there's six books, and there's more coming. Yeah, up if you now, want to get the press, these are the books for you. He's exactly okay. <laughs> so this guy Thomas Covenant, right? He That's the character. is he's a he's yes. a character. He he has a family. Everything's going great in his oh life. All of a sudden, he comes down with leprosy. Right. His his wife leaves him. Mm-hmm. He's a writer. He can't finish his work. Uh, he's he's going to lose his nice house. Leprosy obviously causes all kinds of problems in his life. And all of a sudden, somehow, and I forget it, I haven't read it since high school because it's so depressing. <laughs> somehow he gets transported to this magical Tolkien-esque world yeah. where there's this evil overlord uh, and he's going to destroy the world. And, and there's this small group of, of plucky you know, creatures that are going to fight against him. And Thomas Covenant doesn't believe in any of them. <laughs> and there's the, he's in the land, which is what the, what the world he finds himself in right. is, is called. And somehow the land has this healing property and his, his leprosy is healed. And one side effect of leprosy is that you're impotent. And so he realizes, wait a minute. Oh, my God. I don't have leprosy anymore. I'm not impotent. Wait, there's a pretty girl. And rapes her. Yeah. Huh? Hmm. So that's the main character. Yeah. Now, haven't you complained about books like this before? I'm surprised and you're recommending I, well, it. Well, no, no, no. No. I've com- I would complain about books where – well, yeah. Yes, I have. <laughs> um. No, I, I not think you can't like it. I'm just saying it's a really dark book, dude. <laughs> it's it's very dark. What's the set? What's the time period for this? What do you mean? It's I mean, fantasy. Well, because now he's traveling yeah. from now. It was written uh, when into okay. a fantasy world. Okay. When was it written, Craig? Was this an 80s book? It, it takes that whole, you know, wow, I'm going into a fantasy world, and totally 
spins it on its head. Yeah, it's definitely because it's a, not yeah. somebody who could really appreciate that they're in a fantasy world. It's this, and they actually call him in that universe. They call they the title they give him is Thomas Covenant, the Unbeliever, because yeah. he doesn't believe any of it is real, and that gives him certain powers over what's going on around right. him. And yes, eventually he does feel bad about raping the girl. And he, I mean, he goes through a, a vast change where he realizes slowly over time that um, Lord Fowl is the guy that is is trying to destroy the land for reasons of his <laughs> own. And he, over time, realizes that nobody can save the the world but him. And he's still like bitter about it. And he's like, I just want to go, you know, walk around not having leprosy. <laughs> But uh, at the end of each book, he gets kicked out back into his life, and he's got leprosy again, and he's got to go wow. through all this like adjustment. I don't know. I'm kind of intrigued. Yeah, well, I, I, it's, it's the kind of series that I think would really intrigue you, Rafe, in particular. If you like, yeah, I mean, I read it. It was it, I, I found an interesting read. It's, yeah. it's so different, but it's you got to really be in the mood for something really dark. Because well, is, exactly. I mean, it it's not dark. going. It, it it really does turn a whole bunch of memes, if you will, on uh, their heads. It's, yeah, dark. Yeah. Okay. Um, but as far I, I, another standard from my high school days that I've read, not recently, but read is uh, Catherine Kurtz and the Dear Nee series. Yeah, familiar with that one. Which is um, which is good. Uh, it's a it takes a whole different spin on magic. Is like this racial ability, not not so much like something that you can learn and things like that. Um, so I really enjoyed those, but that was a long time ago. And they spit. There's a huge amount of books, and some of them. That's are kind another of one of those series. And, that yeah. for whatever reason affected my head. It melted my brain. I it, right? oh. Yeah, I and it's it. I, and I mean, and there's some dark ones in there too because there's like there's some guys that that like there's a book about a saint who gets martyred and so yeah, so that can get dark. No, it wasn't even because of dark. I just remember reading it and having the strangest unsettling dreams while reading that because the way she described magic and stuff because uh, gotcha. it was more mental and stuff, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's like you don't draw it from nature and then cast it out or anything like that. Right. Yeah. Um, another one is if you enjoy the Arthurian legends, which I do, uh, <laughs> Stephen R. Really? Lawhead's Pendragon cycle is a great retelling of the Arthurian legends where they don't mess with the basic moral fiber of the actual story. <laughs> not that it bothers you. So not that that bothers me at all. No. Um, no not that it's not beautiful. Not that Camelot <laughs> on stars isn't beautiful. And I'm not just saying that because somebody from the special effects team emailed me. <laughs> okay? It is beautiful. And Please I, don't and pick I, on our but, show. It's awesome. It, it's, um, that's when you're like, wow, my, somebody <laughs> listens to my podcast. But anyway, um, but the Pendragon cycle is awesome because it actually ties in in a way that totally makes sense. Um, Atlantis gets tied into it. And so a whole bunch of stuff gets tied into it. Into a, it's a three, books, a three book series. Very good. I enjoyed it. Um, I, I, it's down there on the pub shelves. The, the next one that I think. Oh, I'm so glad you put this on here. I'm so glad you put this on the yeah. list. This should Joel have been on there. Joel Rosenberg, A, is an awesome writer who does a whole bunch of, he's got some awesome science fiction out yeah. there. Uh, he's, he does a lot. His seminal work fantasy wise is the guardians of the flame, which oh, is the, yes. for me, it's the series about, people from our world going into a fantasy world if you are an rpg player yes you need to read these books um because they're fantastic i mean it's all the basic premise of the story is there's this group of kids that plays dungeons and dragons and it turns out their dm is actually a wizard <laughs> i like i like stories like this. and he takes them all over into uh an alternate reality which in which they become so it's not like you're still you in this other reality it, you become your character so one of the kids was is crippled, right? Can't walk, yeah, and all yeah. of a sudden he becomes a dwarf, a, dwarf, a fully yeah. working oh. dwarven warrior. Yeah, and and so it goes through this thing. But then it, what's interesting is what happens in this world. How does what happened in this world affect you back in the quote unquote real world? Yeah, and when do you leave back and forth? And all these really interesting things happen with character well, development. They can't and, ever go back. Well, that's the question, the, right? The wizard goes back, right? right. So, so that's sort of what what happens back and forth is right. is, uh, and, and it's it to me it's interesting because they're taking their their moral mm -hmm. fiber from our world, their moral background and underpinnings, and they're bringing it into this fantasy world, right? And they're also taking their scientific knowledge from this world, right. into that fantasy world where they're like, well, 
you know, gunpowder is awesome, but we, we, we don't, we've tried it and we can't figure out how to make gunpowder work. But you know what? Magic works and we know how gunpowder works. So, so they've got all these really cool yeah. hybrid things that they're creating. Really interesting, really great book. And if you, again, yeah. if you're a role, play, a role player, it's a, it's a good read. That's the one. <laughs> that That's another one that me. got kind of weird towards the end of the series. It but the first strange. four or five books are awesome. Yeah. That one reminds me of another Terry Brooks one I liked. <laughs> Magic Kingdom for Sale. Oh, that's very funny. I like that a lot. Oh, you do like that one. Okay. I do like that. I mean, because it doesn't take itself seriously, unlike... Yes. You know. So, Russ, that's another one where you go from, from modern day back into fantasy. Mm-hmm. But in that one, you can go back and forth. Yeah, yeah. that's cool. Uh, okay. So, next is... Uh, this is a book that I don't think a lot of people... Or a series that I don't think a lot of people have read. And it is awesome and must be read. And it... It's, it could almost be um, alternate history, but it's called The General Series by S.M. Sterling. And the basic premise is mankind spread across the stars, blah, blah, blah. Then there was a massive ba- a war. Everybody you know, fell out of contact with each other, and every planet has to basically recreate civilization on its own. Ooh. And this, on this one planet, they have this um, – uh, and a satellite that had everything like it, it was ta- it, w- it had a supercomputer on it that was tasked with when this planet is ready, introduce the technology to go across the stars and recreate basically the Star League or, you know, the the Empire or whatever. I can't remember what it's trying to recreate. But so it's this um, it's this AI in this massive supercomputer and it's crashed. So it's underground and this guy stumbles upon it. And it's like it, it like does the scan of him morally and intellectually and physically and psychologically. And it's like, yep, you're the guy and chooses him to basically boost his Napoleonic era or maybe even not quite Napoleonic era civilization into spacefaring so that they can go over and reestablish. Oh, wow. And the series doesn't go all that way. The series goes to the point where he establishes himself as the guy who is going to do that for the whole planet. And then, you know, and that's the end of the story. Oh, yeah. But um, it's awesome to the point where all, so, for some reason on this planet, all the horses died out. And so they started breeding dogs bigger and bigger and bigger. So they ride dogs in a battle. <laughs> cool. <laughs> It's awesome. So that's S.M. Sterling, The General, which is fantastic. One of my favorite series. Uh, and just very quickly, which actually ties in no, with... Closing. They're uh, going to kick us out, man. I know, I know, all I right. know. But this ties in a little bit with Magic Kingdom for Sale Soul. Ooh, all right. Okay, is Lawrence Watt Evans, who's got a whole bunch of fantasy, and I like it. It didn't quite make my list here, but I like it a lot. But one of my favorite of all time fantasy books is called The Misenchanted Sword. Ooh which is about this guy he's a soldier he's he's there's this like eternal war going on between these two nations and he gets caught behind enemy lines and he's like oh man i have to fight my way back to my home blah 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 and he finds himself like he 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 bumps into this wizard living in a in a swamp and he's like, you've got to help me get home. And the wizard's like, no, forget you. I don't even know who you are. And the guy's like, no, no, no. You have to help me get home or I'll kill you. And the guy's like, oh, okay. If you're going to be that way about it. So where's your sword? And the wizard basically puts every – but he's crazy, the wizard. So he basically puts every sword he could ever uh, – every spell he could ever remember on the sword, which is like it's super powerful and it does this and it does that. But it's got like 18 different personality quirks that, like, that make it like the worst thing you could ever have with you. And the guy fights his way back home with it, but it's like the main the the book is about him like having to deal with this sword, and he wants to get rid of it, but you can't get rid of it, and uh, he tries to throw it in a river, and there's a massive flood just so that the sword will end up back on his doorstep, and mm. like the whole village is wiped out because of the flood, and then at one point somebody's like, well, why don't you throw it in the ocean? He's like, yeah, great, tidal wave, that's a good idea. <laughs> So it's 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 a little it's very tongue in cheek. It's very humorous, but it's also sort of poignant and emotional. I can't I can't recommend it enough. Lawrence Watt Evans' Misenchanted Sword. There are two it other books familiar that, actually. There, yeah, there are two. Well, it came out in the it was big in in, in the eighties when Lawrence Watt Evans was chur- churning stuff out. Um, there's two other books that take place in the same world uh, that I enjoy uh, with a single spell is one of them. I can't. remember. Oh yeah, that rings a bell. Uh, yeah, but. They don't. They don't hold a candle to Misenchanted Sword, which I love. Cool. There you go. Awesome. Well, that is our fantasy collection. 
That's uh, right. The ones we yep. recommend. Of course, we read a lot more than that, but those are the ones that we uh, right. think those, about. Those are the ones that made our big list. We still have other categories we've never covered, like uh, steampunk and alternate history and all kinds of mm-hmm. stuff. Maybe we'll do another People one in the future. for comics. Yeah, well, and, and, and you know, we'll see about that, too. All right, so uh, that is another lost chapter in the can, folks. Let me go get another coffee before I leave. Oh, yeah, make it a couple. Thanks for purchasing a D6G Lost Chapter. Supporting the show with all the sick All right, Craig, I need levels, though. Give me some levels. Give me some exciting, exciting volumes. Uh, <laughs> nice. I think you've already done that one. <laughs> you've already done this one. We can't do this again as a bumper. The lost chapter. All right. Okay, that was there's our bumper. On the plus side, you didn't max out. That was good.